in prayer about that and uh, just come to me and if the Lord would have me to share something with you, I will do the same. We found that communication, open communication is a good thing, right brother? <laughs> it's taken a while to understand each other sometimes, but that's part of the, the, the continuing steadfastly. So that's good news. All right? So praise the Lord. Look at that. Computer is working. All right. We're all set, Mr. John? Seems like it. All right. Tell me when we're really on because I have a, a uh, proclamation I'd like to make publicly this morning. In, in honor of our Senator Marco Rubio of the great state of Florida, I'd like to take a drink publicly and over the Internet. Whoa. to come against all the uh, liberal media that attacks that he has taken for taking a drink publicly. Isn't that amazing? What, what folks would try to do to discourage the good news. Amen? All right. Well, praise the Lord. Um, I probably need my Bible this morning. So maybe we could pause. <laughs> this, this is like... Uh, This is, this is longer than getting a drink of water. I really came off the scene there. All right. Let's turn together as we continue to look at the picture of the kingdom. What does God's kingdom look like? This kingdom picture, Matthew 24. I'd like to go there this morning. And uh, again, this morning, as this is all new, uh, new digging, new revelation uh, for me, I ask that you would listen intently as we uh, preach together this morning. Amen. As we hear the Word of God together this morning, Matthew chapter 24. If you need an outline, raise your hand. We'll have a helper get one to you, but they're sitting up here on the front table. Shane will get those. All right, Shane? Right there. Kingdom Picture Series. Matthew 24. Let me make this uh, proposition statement this morning. It's printed there on your outline. Uh, the end time signs, these things that we are seeing, these things that we are hearing that people are trying to do to predict times and seasons and, and when things are going to happen. These end times are not to scare us, but they're to strengthen us to make disciples. To strengthen us to make disciples. So as we look at Matthew chapter 4, I believe we're going to see that this morning. So uh, this morning's title, the, the Signals, the Signal or the Signals. Uh, signal comes from the uh, Latin term sign which serves to indicate or to warn or to direct or command. You guys all know what signals are. Uh, we have, of course, the stop signs, our signal, our street signs, uh, street lights are signals. You have warning signals in your vehicles. Uh, my vehicle tells me when it's time to change the oil. Uh, I've seen some vehicles that tell us when uh, our tires need air. Uh, when there's, um, your vehicle's about to overheat, there's a sign, there's a signal, and there's a warning sign. Uh, so as we look in Matthew uh, chapter 4, we're going to see this, uh, these signs, these signals of the Lord Jesus. So let's go ahead and read that this morning, Matthew chapter 24. Then Jesus went out, departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to Jesus privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? And of the end of the age? And Jesus said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Circle that verse. That's going to be one we're going to look at this morning. Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. 
But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nations, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. And all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. No amens on that one? And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to, the, to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look here is the Christ, and there do not believe. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I've told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look he is in the desert. Do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms. Do not believe. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. And immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect for the four winds from one end of the earth, uh, heaven to the other. Now learn this parable from the fig tree, when its branches has already become tender and puts forth leaves. You know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the heavens before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore for you do not know the hour your Lord is coming. But know this that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. And assuredly I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if the evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, or at an hour when he is not aware of it, and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. My. Again, so we're looking at the, the, a survey or a summary of this chapter, so that's why I went ahead and read the whole chapter to you. 
Uh, these are the, the signals, the signs. And again, the end time signs are not to scare us, but to strengthen us to make disciples. You can become quite fearful by just reading this chapter, couldn't you? Of some of the things that are going on in our world, some of the things that we're reading about, and some of the things that we see as it lines up here with Scripture. So let's look at this. Uh, so this morning we're going to need to play a game, so I need some helpers. Uh, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Five helpers. Come on, five helpers. Come on up here for a second. We're going to remind the, uh, the older folks this morning of a game that's going to help us understand the scripture this morning. And uh, since um, Marky is the oldest, we're going to let him lead the game. Oh, do we need another helper? Come on. There we go. All right. All right, so Mark, I'm going to have you stand on this side with Sissy, the little cupcake. And, uh, all right, so we're going to play a game called uh, Red Light, Green Light. All right, so you guys want to back up a little bit and show us how this is done. All right. You ready? Yes. Aren't you supposed to turn around? Oh, yeah. oh that's right. Okay. I thought you said we knew how to play the game. I forgot. It's been a while. I know. You haven't been playing it at college? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Give them a hand, would you, this morning? You guys may want to come and run, too. Get a little warm, huh, Miss Pat? Do you want to come up here and run red light green? Okay. That'll warm me up a little bit. All right. So what's the whole purpose of what's going on with this game, red light, green light? You have, you have Mark, he was the light, right? And uh, then he would turn around, and the, the helpers would run and move, and the object was to get to the light, right? And they didn't know the, the day, the time, or the hour, right, that Marky was going to turn around and say red light or green light, right? He said red light, they'd go, and, or red light, they'd stop, and green light, they'd go. So that's what we're going to look at this morning through these signals, red light, green light. So on one side of your paper, you have the red lights, and on the other side of your outline, you have the green lights. So let's go ahead and, and look, march through this a little bit. And uh, last week, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm trying to take that scripture literally about... Um, uh, the how's it go about children? Be uh, have your faith as childlike faith. So last week we watched a cartoon. And this week we we're playing red light, green light. Are you feeling younger already? Okay, good. All right, great. So let's go move down a little bit. So uh, again, you see that Jesus makes this uh, prediction that the temple is going to be destroyed, and we know by our history books that the this temple was destroyed in the year what? Seventy. 70 that's right. So he's made a prediction from about 30-something, right, 33-ish. Uh, so some 40 years later, the temple is going to be destroyed. And as we move down from chapter 24, we get to this uh, verse here, verse 3. Now, as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, and they said, Tell us when these things will be. And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? So, you know, that's a, a good question to ask. Just, just tell us, Jesus, you know, when these things will happen and, and we'll be ready for them. I mean, isn't that true? Isn't that how they live their life? That if you would just tell us, we would do it. I mean, that's how you are, isn't it, as a, as a human being? Just tell me what to do and I'll just go and do it. And you're just full of that obedience all the day long, aren't you? Do your homework. Pay attention. Take out the trash. Honey, pick up those socks. Right? Well, let's see what happens here. Verse 4, 
these disciples ask Jesus these questions, and he replies in this manner. Verse 4, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. So they have questions, but Jesus yells out, Red light, take heed, pay attention, wake up, stop, listen. This is what's about to take place. Take heed that no one deceives you. Now I got to thinking about this deceiving word, and, and you know, deception isn't always clear to us, is it? Deception is sneaky. Deception is cunning. Deception hides itself. Uh, I watched that movie a while back uh, called Taken. And uh, one of the things they do is they would come up to the person and they quickly threw a hood over the person's head and uh, restrained him and threw him in the van and they took off. Uh, that's really not deception. Uh, deception is a, a wandering away. It's a slow fade when you give yourself away as the song goes. This deception, a, a wandering, to cause to wander, to, to lead astray. It, it's slow. It's, it's, uh, it's not so obvious because if it was obvious to you that you were being led astray, then you'd most likely would what? Stop and you wouldn't be led astray. So Jesus' first words about these questions are, this is not the big deal, guys. The big deal isn't that you know what time I'm coming. The big deal isn't, isn't which side of the street I'm coming on. The big deal is that you take heed and do not be deceived. Red light. Take heed so that you're not deceived. And this is what's going to take place, he says. When I go in my physical form, when I leave and I ascend... And I send the Holy Spirit to live inside of you. When I go, many, verse 5, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. And will deceive many. The deception is, will you know my truth? Will you know the difference between truth and deception? And he talks about this. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled. It's not that you don't care about it. But you don't want those things to trouble you. You don't want those things to consume you. Your every thought, your every action. You want to be consumed with who? Jesus, Jesus absolutely. You don't want to allow the circumstances and situations of your life to dictate your relationship with Him. So He says, don't worry about those things. See that they that you are not troubled, he says. For these things must come to pass. Remember back in Matthew 16, where Jesus told his disciples that he's going to be taken, he's got to go to Jerusalem, he's going to suffer many things from the chief priests and scribes, and he's going to be crucified. And Peter said, well, this is not a good thing for you, Jesus. We don't want this to happen to you. I don't want this to happen to you. But what was Jesus' response to Peter saying that? He said, what? Get behind me, Satan. You're not mindful of the things of God, but you're mindful of the things of of man. So again, in these end times, in these last days, when these signs come, we don't want to be mindful of the things of man. We want to be mindful of the things of God. Because here we're seeing that Jesus is telling us what is going to take place. What's about to, to uh, happen in our end times. See that these things don't trouble you. For all these things must come to pass. Nations are going to rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Um, this is not the newspaper I'm reading, right? This is in the scripture. Yeah, this, is, this has happened and is happening. Verse 80 says, And all these are the beginning of sorrows. What else did they tell you? That they're going to deliver you up to tribulation. And they're going to kill you. And you'll be hated by 
all nations from thy name's sake. Now, could you imagine being a disciple and, and hearing this message? And it's really not the first time that he's told them about it, because remember back in chapter 10? He said, well, I'm going to send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. And he told them back then in chapter 10 not to be deceived. So again, here's this repetition, this reminding of, of what the kingdom of God looks like, how the kingdom of God operates. And then many will be offended and betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Uh, uh, has that happened before? Yep. Has it happened one or two thousand million zillion times since 33 AD? Well, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Has that happened? Whoa. But here's verse 13. So verse 4 is the red light. Here's verse 13. Green light. Here's the conjunction. But, right? But he who endures... Come on, that's a good word, isn't it? He who endures, he who continues steadfastly, he who clings to Jesus and his word... He who allows Jesus to run wildly and through him, to the end will be what? Saved. Amen. No matter what. You're going to be saved. As long as you endure, as long as you continue steadfastly, as long as you continue in Jesus and his word. And what else happens? There's a second part when Jesus gives a green light. Not only are you saved, but there's also something that comes in, not just in you, but through you. Verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. So this is why the proposition said that, hey, the end times uh, are here not just to scare you, but to strengthen you, and the reason we didn't stop there was is to strengthen you to what? To make disciples. Because you've never been saved for yourself. Amen. You're also saved for others. To be a proclamation, to be a light of the transformation that has happened to you. If you are a light that's been transformed and is burning brightly, then others will see that light. So that's your first red light, green light. You get down to verse 15 and then it says what? Therefore you will see the abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. Uh, this abomination. And what does he say about it? What's going to happen? What does this abomination look like? Well, here's what he gives you this picture. Verse 16, Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. There's going to be a fleeing that takes place. There's going to be those who are on the housetop that are not going to be able to go down and, and take anything out of the house. There's going to be, a um, uh, verse 18, those who are in the field are not going to be allowed to go back. to get clothes and woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. Wow. It's going to be a horrible time, isn't it? But, but Jesus had already talked about this, didn't he? Remember how he was preparing the disciples in Matthew chapter 10 to, to send them out? What did he say to them? Don't, don't take some shoes. Don't take clothes. Don't take money. Don't, you know. I am sending you, which means I will provide for you, I won't leave you hanging dry, right? Yep. And that's the kind of God we serve, amen? amen? A God that empowers and a God that strengthens, a God that takes care of all of your needs. Verse 15. Red light. Pay attention. This is what's happening. And then you, can send, you continue to read down, continue to read again, but as you read down there, you notice there's this great tribulation. He says in verse 21, uh, lest the days are short and no flesh will be saved in verse 22. He reminds you in verse 23 
that uh, if someone says, look, there's Jesus, there's the Christ, or there, hey, he said, if someone's pointing out and said, there I am, it's not me. Well, how are you going to know? What if somebody's out in a big tent meeting? What if somebody's out in a, in a, in a big TV show and say, I am the Christ, or this is the way Jesus does it? Are you just going to be led astray? Or are you going to be able to discern what they are saying in their preaching and in their teaching. It's verse 24. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders. Great, we've seen great signs and wonders. Do you know the difference between a great sign and a great wonder that Jesus has done and a great sign and a great wonder that Satan himself has done? If he's disguised as light... If he's clothed in light, how are you going to know the difference? You better have some kind of discernment. Amen. These signs and wonders are to deceive. And says, so and if possible, even the elect could be deceived. Whoa. Just when you think you're all that in a bag of chips, <laughs> you could be deceived. See, I've told you beforehand. This isn't the first time I've mentioned this to you. And obviously, it's not going to be the last time you're going to hear it. He says, look, how if somebody says, I'm in the desert, don't go and look. Hey, look, I'm in the inner room, don't believe. Tribulation. Deception. In the last days. The signals, the signs of the end times. But thank God for verse 30. Verse 30 is a green light. The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And then they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven in power and great glory. That's good news, isn't it? And he will send his angels with a trumpet, a, a sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect for the, from the four winds and from the end of the heaven to the other. That's a green light right there, isn't it? And why us? Well, verse 32. Now learn. Oh, this is one of my favorite words now. Now learn. Learn this parable from the fig tree. And you need to see the, the colon sign, right? So he gives you the parable. The parable is when its branches has when its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So now go back and read it and don't, talk, don't say the parable. Now, learn this parable from the fig tree. Why are we learning the parable from the fig, fig tree? Verse 33. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. So 30 and 32 are your two green lights to come against the red light of this abomination. The abomination of desolation. Verse 30 is the sign of the Son of Man. And verse 32 is now when you see this sign, continue to what? To learn. And what's that word learn mean? Well, this is a great news. The idea of learn. Uh, the word learn is a, it's an imperative, so it's a command. So it's not a suggestion, but it's a command. So learn this parable. Learn what this means. And in this idea of learning, the word learn comes from, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a mixture of the idea of, of making disciples. So there's a great relationship between this word learn and to, of the word disciple. Or then, of course, we know the word to make disciples. So again, it goes back to our proposition. The end times are not to scare us, but to strengthen us to what? To make disciples. To make disciples. To learn. Learn the parable. And what's going on in this learning? Well, surely I say to you, verse 34, this generation by no means will pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my what? Words will by no means pass away. The temple has come and gone, but his word continues to stand true, doesn't it? Yes. He has come and gone in his physical form, but his word continues to stand firm and true. His disciples have come and gone, but his word continues to stand true. Some of those original churches that Paul planted have come and gone, but his word continues to stand true. 
Verse 36, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Red light. Again, the statement that no one knows. So let's quit trying to know, quit trying to figure it out, even, even in the sense of preparing for. Not that we shouldn't prepare, not that we shouldn't be good stewards, but the idea of all that consuming us, so that we said back there that these things don't trouble you. Don't be troubled by this stuff. It's going to happen. It must come to pass. Amen. But be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Amen? Be strong in it so that no one deceives you. So verse 36 now is the next uh, red light. But of that day and hour no one knows but only the Father. And then he goes all the way back and reminds us of this of a great time in the past where great tribulation had come before. And he talks about the flood scene. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Uh, Noah prepared, didn't he? He, he, was, he was led by, by God. God told him to build the, the ark. He told him to prepare for this rain, and no one even knew what rain was, but they prepared for it. Uh, they were not troubled by it, they were not consumed by it, but yet he was ready for it. And then those that he told in his society were not willing to prepare themselves as well. They were not willing to be ready. Uh, because he says in verse 38, In those days those were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And once Noah entered the ark, what happened? The flood came, right? It took those away. It was a great cleansing that took place from all those who did not believe. And he says the same thing is going to take place when the Son of Man comes. The rapture, the taking away of the righteous, the cleansing away of the unrighteous, two men will be in the field, one will be taken up, one will be left. Two women will be working, and at the mill, one will be taken up, one will be left. Verse 42. Green light. Watch. He says, watch. Uh, command form there. Watch. Therefore, for you do not know the hour your Lord is coming. But notice that if the master of the house had known the hour the thief would have come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, verse 44, be ready. Vigilant, another imperative. Be ready, a command. Be ready. Be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you don't expect. Who then is faithful and wise? Servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Uh, so you see the difference here, don't you, between the red light and the green light. The red light, the, the warning sign, the, the, the sign to wake you, and then the green light to, to strengthen you and to empower you to sustain you, to, to give you power over any fear, any condemnation, and then to empower you to go out and continue to, to make disciples. Oh, so are you ready? Are you willing to play red light, green light? Because the signs are coming. The signs are here. Some of those signs will be red lights. And some of those signs will yell green light. So maybe we're walking in uh, Walmart one day. I'll be on aisle 7. You'll be over on aisle 12. And I'll hear you yell out red light. <laughs> or maybe I'll hear you yell green light. Kingdom of Heaven. Be 
ready so that no one deceives you, so that, so, so that no one leads you astray. Uh, it's real important, especially in these last days. we give you a few, a few scriptures to close with. Uh, Colossians chapter 2. Paul's writing to the, the, the Colossians and he, he reminds them of, of the great conflict that he has for them, he says, verse chapter 2. For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and, and those in Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts be encouraged being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of full assurance and understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now I say, now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. This is what quite a few years after Jesus has ascended. For though I am absent in the flesh, and I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Notice what Paul says. He is explaining exactly what Peter preached in Acts. That he's not giving them things to do, but his first thing that of importance is that, have you been transformed? And as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and builded up in Him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. And then again, here's the red light. Beware, lest anyone cheat you, 